everybody. Welcome back to the second episode of Get Sweaty. Yeah, the first one was successful enough. We decided to come back. Uh, once again, I am one of the hosts, Matt Majo. Uh, you also might know me as Soda from Schmoes of the North. Um, here to break down all the stuff in movies, geekdom, sports, you know, the usual stuff. Once again, I have my main men, Ben and Jordan, with me. How are you boys doing? Good. How are you? I'm awake. <laughs> I'm doing good, yeah. Ready to get get this going. <laughs> right on, you guys. Had a, you got, yeah, we got a lot to talk about, especially with what happened yesterday with DC Phantom. So, you know what? We might as well just hop right into it. Jordan, yeah. what were the news items you have this week, my man? Cool. So, yeah, I definitely watched probably, I want to say, about 90% of all of the, the – uh, DC fandom yesterday and there was a lot like a lot that the, that they talked about but I just wanted to point out a few of the biggest highlights you know and um let's see the event though was a pretty cool event they, they had this pretty cool setup where like it looked like they're actually inside some kind of dome that was actually illustrated by by a lot of the the DC artists and the big one was was Jim Lee so oh, right on. Was, and and uh, Jim Lee, he's a pretty big part of the of the DC. I think he he's the head of creative operations. I want to say over at, at DC, he's worked for Marvel and DC mm -hmm. both. But he uh, and so yeah, he was just kind of helping run the ship and do a lot of cool creative things. Where like like the whole setup looked really like like something like you're almost like like on a theme park ride almost. And <laughs> just the way that they had the whole stage set up with different screens and everything. So so that was a lot of fun to see. Cool, cool, and. Yeah, so probably the uh, this week we have some Batman news. Definitely, I'm going to mm. kick it off with it, with that. So it was announced earlier this week that Ben Affleck is actually going to be re returning to be in the upcoming Flash movie. So he's going to put on on the cape and the cowl one more time for the Flash movie, and it's going to be part of of uh, one of the Flash's alternate timelines that he goes to, and and. I, for one, I'm hoping that we get to see him in in more than just the Flash. I hope it maybe reinvigorates Ben Affleck. I mean, I mean, there's nothing that, that's saying he's doing anything else. It could, for all we know, it could be just a quick cameo, just really quick, you know. But, but like I, I, I was someone who was a huge fan of 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 Ben Affleck, and so I'm really and hoping to see more of them. And they're saying we're going to see Ben Affleck, also Michael Keaton. So that's that's going to be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I'm pretty jazzed myself. Uh, I personally, for me, Ben Affleck is the best version of Batman. Everyone else had their, you know, they were good at this, they were good at that. Ben was the one that was the best overall, so it's good to see him back. Um, how I think it is his last time, personally. I think uh, he just did it just to tie up the boat because they're probably going to do the whole um, Flashpoint thing where it's a different Batman at the end or whatever. That's just my take on it. Yeah. Definitely. I'm, I'm happy about it. I think he's good. My favorite Batman is Keaton. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be in it anyway. So I'm doubly happy. Yeah, no, I'm with you. My favorite is Keaton as well. But I'm just saying like the best one is, is like okay. overall is, 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 um, is Affleck. But yeah, Keaton's always going to be my Batman. Yep. Love and I was gonna, yep. <laughs> And I'm just going to add also that the, the Flash movie, they have it tentatively set for June 22nd, 2022. So that's kind of like a, a tentative date. So so it, so it as far as, as things go, if things go perfectly, that's when it's going to be released. But we'll kind of wait and see how it all plays out. But then now, also, is that, too. Is it, is oh. that, is, is it falling in the category New Mutants where it's like, I'll believe it when I see a trailer or when I, yep, when I finally exactly. see it? Yeah, Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Once we see the 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 trailer with like an official date on it, then we might start to believe it a little more. <laughs> yeah, the concept art was really cool, though. I'll say that that they showed. Yeah. Yeah, it is really awesome. Yeah, I'm liking everything that I'm seeing for that. And and also along with the Batman news, there there's also uh. So we had Matt Reeves. He came out and he and he won. He he was talking about the new um. Uh, Gotham PD show that they're going to be having over at HBO Max, and so he's saying how that's going to cover year one of, of, of the Batman. I, I don't know 
how much Batman's actually going to be in it. I, I haven't really heard a confirmation one way or the other, but but that's what he's saying, and and it's kind of going to be like, uh, be, kind of like a, uh, like a a fight for the soul of the Batman. So he's just trying to figure out who he is, what he's doing with this whole Batman thing, and you know, and then also they dropped the the, the big bomb of the whole night that everyone was waiting for. They, they had a trailer for the for the Batman movie yeah. that with Robert Pattinson and and Robert Pattinson came on screen to kind of talk briefly uh, about it and and it just like for me it just blew my mind I, like it was like so awesome it just looked like a like the best fan made movie ever made but 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 like in that sense as to say like it's all the things that fans want to see in a Batman movie yeah and but then just like 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 the best version of a Batman movie that I've ever seen. Like, like I was just floored by it. What the, the craziest thing about it is they've only shot 30% of the movie. Right. And I know and that's they were crazy. Able, they were able to give us such a good trailer and, Oh yeah. Like uh, to quote Kevin Smith, I was like, skeet, skeet, skeet the whole time. Like it was, <laughs> it was awesome. Like it, yeah. it's and like, like Ben and I were talking prior previously to going on air it. And I heard this online. It does look like Fincher seven. Like visual, right? It, it does, yeah. This is going to be some totally different beast. I this is going to be a movie that people are going to be talking about for a long time. I think. Yep, and and one I of the things that. I really like is that you like totally expect him to say, "There's a lion where they where they say, who are you?" And then he and he goes, "I am vengeance," and you're vengeance. like expecting to say, "I say I am Batman," but he says vengeance. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah. What were your thoughts on the trailer, Ben? <laughs> I loved it. I love the tone, I love the voice, I love the action, the Riddler looks scary, I yeah. love the thing. What about the Penguin? It, it, this, that looks nothing like Colin Farrell. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. Him, t- yeah. It, it yeah, was it, great. And, oh yeah, everything, everything you're doing, Paul Dano was an inspired choice to play the Riddler, if you ask me. Like that, that oh, is yeah. <laughs> spot on casting. Yeah, but then we got a couple of glimpses of like we definitely saw Commissioner Gordon in there. Then you heard the voice yep. of, of Andy Circus as yeah. uh, as Alfred, and then you saw a little glimpse of the Catwoman in in there, Zoe Kravitz. So you got a few glimpses of like what all the characters are going to initially look like. So, uh, yeah, this is this is going to be an event film. Yeah, it really will be. Definitely. Right. Well, let's see. Well, we have next here, so. Um, one of the other panels from the from DC fandom, we had director Patty Jenkins came out to to obviously talk about the Wonder Woman, and she pretty much had like most of the main cast with her on screen. So that they <laughs> they, they uh, talked a lot about the movie, and then they also dropped the third and I'm guessing final trailer because the movie's coming up soon. And it's, it'll be yes, like, sir. Late, Released October second, so but that trailer also was another one that that just blew me away. Like I was, was just loving everything that I saw from it. Like I love the whole '80s vibe, and and then you, yeah. you got to see it. Is it uh, is it Cheetah that that uh, yeah. Christian Wiggs playing? Is that yeah, the Cheetah? Name of it? And yeah, I'm not gonna lie. When they went full Cheetah at the end and showed like her as a, an actual Cheetah, like they do in the comics, it, I was just like, holy shit, they went for it. I honestly yeah, didn't think right. they were going to go that far, but they did, and it was like, yeah! Oh, right. I was saying <laughs> this. I was saying this. It looks like you that chat. <laughs> yeah, that, you're not wrong there. You're definitely <laughs> not wrong there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, and like, I'm, I'm really wondering how the hell Steve Trevor comes back. It has, right. to, <laughs> it has to be some. It has to do something with Maxwell Lord, the villain of the movie. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It, ha- it has to be. And uh, I was talking with a friend of mine last night, and he said it might. He thinks it might have something to do with the technology that made um, Cheetah Cheetah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, because yeah, I just like seeing Chris Pine just kind of the like the the like. Like person out of his own timeline, so he's trying to yeah. figure out the whole world and what's going on around him. Even in the '80s, like he, like he just seems like like kind of lost, but it's just like a fun journey to to just see him kind of like figuring it all out, you know? Yeah, the parachute pants <laughs> joke. I like the bit about oh, once I'm once I'm flying, they'll never see it. She's like, you yeah. don't know about radar. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Yeah. Uh, it's going to be good. Is- I, my friend also t- has it out there theory. He's like, I wonder if that's going to be the introduction of the invisible plane. I'm like, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, but I thought no. that that was cool to see some more of Wonder Woman's powers. You saw her with the lasso tree kind of swinging on some lightning bolts and yeah. swinging on the clouds and all that. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm in love with Gal Gadot. She can do no wrong in my book, especially as Wonder Woman. Right, and, and when they first cast her, it's like everyone ha- were, was kind of up in arms. They're like, oh, she's just some underwear model that can't act or whatever. Yeah. And, and it, but, but it's like she's really done a great job with it. You know? Well, yeah, because at that point, the thing that she was known most for was her role as Giselle in The Fast and the Furious. And you oh, know right. what? She was pretty good in that. Yeah. What, what were your guys' yeah. reaction when they first cast her? I wanted um, I wanted what's her name, from um, for I wanted Jamie Alexander, but I like oh, really? her now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jamie Alexander, that would have been an interesting choice. That would have been yeah, a good that. Choice. Yeah, for um, me, I remember when when they first showed. I can't remember what her, what her name is, but she's the actress. She's in that show Friday Night Lights, and they showed a little like they almost like made a Wonder Woman with with that actress oh, in yeah, there. Um, yeah. um, um, Adrian Ad- Adelic- She was in yeah. Marvel Agent Shield and Supernatural. Yeah, and yeah. So they had some concept art come out with her as Wonder Woman. And when I saw that, I was kind of sold with that. But the, and then when they, they announced Gal Gadot, I was kind of like, oh, she's she's pretty skinny yeah. and, and and like doesn't really seem like she really fits that part. But I mean. Just from oh, the first she, time I saw her on screen, pretty much I was just just blown away. I'm like, all right, yep, that's the right choice. Yeah, they knew what they were then, talking about. Seeing her out there with the fans and stuff, it's like they didn't cast Wonder Woman. She is Wonder Woman, you know. She's yeah, like an like, inspiration to all the kids. She's really, she's a really seems like a really nice, nice down to earth person. Like, could have could have picked anyone better. Right. Yep. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, so let's go on to the next story. So um, Zack Snyder, he came on screen for a little bit, and he talked about the Snyder cut of, of the Justice League, and and he uh, dropped a trailer for that as well. And then he also mentioned, yes. too, that when it dropped on HBO Max, that he's going to be releasing it into four one-hour segments, which is kind of interesting, which I actually like because it's like – the four one-hour segments, most people would probably think, oh, like I don't really want to watch a four-hour movie. That's just way too long for most people. But when you break it up like that, it kind of makes it a little more digestible and just kind of easier to watch. And it just means that, that we're not really missing anything. Like everything Zack Snyder wants to be in this movie is, is going to be there. Like we're not going to have anything else cut out because, I mean, this is this is his cut and he wants everything to be there. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching the full four-hour thing, but it just makes you wonder just how much stuff did he have filmed before, you know, he left. Right, because they're saying that it's almost all new footage. So, I mean, I mean... Yeah, they, they, did, spend 20, I, they did spend $20 million on, on reshoots and stuff, and I had heard a rumor, and this I'm personally open, I had heard a rumor that they are looking into a distribution deal. So if it comes on 4K Blu-ray, I'm there right away to buy it. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, anything. Yeah. Yeah. So what 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 were you uh, looking at the trailer? Like I loved it. Um, I was personally someone if it never came out, I wouldn't have cared. But it's here. I'm gonna devour the shit out of it. Um, what did you guys think of the trailer? What do you think, Ben? I liked it. Okay, I'm in the minority. I love the theatrical cut. Okay. So I know I'm in the minority. I'm fine with it. Everything everyone thinks I actually like, or whatever. Oh, watch it. It was a damn good trailer yesterday. Though. Yes, it was. I, I love that trailer. So I'll check it out, but I'm not like dying to see it. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm hearing you. Like I said, I wasn't dying to see it, but now that it's here, give me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah what, about you? what about you, Jordan? So for me, honestly, like, like I wasn't super impressed by the trailer itself, but I'm, but I'm also one of those, those people that, that from seeing the the footage that I saw, I already can tell that 
that's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. But but the the trailer I thought was a little weirdly kind of cut together. You had this all these like slow kind of artisticy shots, and then you had like a pop song that like Hallelujah song playing, it, and it kind of seems to be like the trend nowadays that, that like all these trailers use some kind of pop song. They slow it down, and it's like like almost like like a. a, a a trendy thing to do pretty much so i'm just kind of like well like i'm a little like not not 100 percent like big on, on on the trailer but but from the footage that, I, that i'm seeing i i know it's going to be awesome and like this is just a, a trailer it's not the actual movie yeah, exactly. and so i'm definitely going to go in, in with, with with an open mind but but like I'm not going in there as pumped as I as I thought that I could be because I thought the trailer kind of looked a little like a music video. They didn't even speak to the end of the trailer. But but I mean I didn't hate it by any means. Like like I have no hate towards this movie or, or any dislike. I just thought thought maybe it could have been a little more polished, a little better. But but like I'm definitely excited. I mean I'm gonna watch it when it comes out day one. So I mean I'm still super excited. Oh for sure. Same here. Now do you think we're gonna see anything? How much of the theatrical cut do you think we're going to see in the Zack Snyder cut? Because there still is some debate as to how much of what was Zack Snyder's and Whedon's. Personally, I hope the Superman fight is in there. That was my favorite part of the whole movie. Oh, yeah. Same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah. And it kind of looked like I was trying to kind of like watch pretty closely to kind of pick out like what I thought might have been from the theatrical yeah. cut. Like, yeah, you see a little scene where, where like you see Aquaman kind of back out into the water. I thought that maybe that was in the the theatrical version, but I, but I can't remember. It's, it's, not. Been, it's been so long since I, I've watched the theatrical version that, I, that like, it's kind of hard to, to remember exactly what was in and what wasn't, but. And, and Ben, sorry, you were going to say when I asked about how, how much of the theatrical was going to be in the new movie, you were about to say something? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't need any of them that act with me in the new one. No, probably not. I don't think... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's uh, one thing that I thought of when I saw the trailer, because there is a shot, and it, it, to me it looks like it's after the end battle um, of, the, the, of the Justice League, and it got me thinking about the theatrical cut, and how much of the suit for Superman was recolored for that. I think all yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, it has uh, to be a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to miss that movie. I love that movie suit. I'm going oh, to miss yeah. it. Now, yeah. I, it was perfect. I... Yeah, when they did a Superman in that movie, it was perfect to me. Yes, and I great. hope he will finally, finally, that Superman that everybody likes, that, yeah, he he was Superman, finally. Yeah, and like, three, you got glimpses he, of it earlier. Like in Man of Steel, there's a moment where Lois got shot by one of the robots, and She's freaking out, and Clark was just like, gives her like this look, like it's gonna be okay, and then she immediately calms down. That to me was the first glimpse of Superman, and like right. you said, we finally got in Justice League, and now we're actually gonna get and that expanded on, it and hopefully continue. I'm ruined, man. I'm ruined that we're not going to get back there. I'm ruined that we're not with all shots. Yeah, 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 and, and I definitely think they're not going to use any of the mustache footage. But they CG no, out no. his mustache. I think that's definitely. I mean, pretty. We're pretty sure that's not going to be there. <laughs> yeah. All right. But, what else came out? Uh, yeah. So, um, was, one thing that I just wanted to just mention quickly because those are really like the three biggest stories. But I wanted to just mention a couple of the video games that they. Had announced, so they they announced one, one that's going to be called the Gotham Knights, and that's where that where you're going to see like Nightwing, and you're going to see Red Hood, you're you're going to see Robin, you're going to see all the uh, you're going to see Batwoman. They're all they're all going to team up, so that's pretty cool. I thought that was awesome. And then you also are going to have the Justice League 
or no, it's the um, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. So that that one even excited me even more when I saw that. So so it's something that that I would would encourage everyone if you can to just go look up those uh, trailers. They're all over YouTube, social media, and, and go give those a, a watch, and you can kind of see see some of the, the footage, some of the gameplay, that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, I laughed so hard at the end of the Suicide Squad trailer when. Superman appears, and it's like it was Deadshot, King Shark, and um, Harley Quinn just standing there looking at Boomerang walks. It's like, okay, so who's the big bad we're supposed to kill? And they're just like... <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, I, I can't and, wait. And then Superman flies in, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, and yep. there's a lot of intrigue about the Gotham Knights also because it's strongly hinted at. I don't, uh, it's been rumored for a while, but the Court of Owls are going to be the main villains of the game. Um, yeah, so yeah. I'm looking forward to that. But also, in the same discussion I had with my friend last night, he thinks it's not in continuity with the other Arkham games, the main series. Okay. Just because and of some well, things that not. happened in the trailer, like some people are there who supposedly died in the last Arkham game. Um, there's uh, some things that are like, for example, Barbara Gordon was in a wheelchair in Arkham Knight. You know, just things like that that he thinks is not going to be in main continuity because it's also from the guys who worked on Arkham Origins but didn't work on the other three games. So there's that too. Right, right. Yeah, it's from Warner Brothers Games Montreal. All right. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to do a little uh, – just wrap up with the, the box office for the week. So um, – there's not a whole lot of box office because, I mean, obviously movie theaters are just getting open again, you know, but um, uh, they did have last week AMC and uh, Regal Theaters, Cinemark, some of the big ones actually opened up some of their theaters. They're not open up in all the big marks where they're still closed, you know, but some of the smaller, more rural areas, they definitely have opened up. And so uh, I'm just going to list off the top five real quick. So you had an Unhinged, is that one with Russell Crowe that came out. Um, then you had the SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run. Then you have at number three, words on bathroom walls, and then the Goonies actually took number four. They had a, they had a, a re-release. I think it's the thirtieth anniversary of this year, so they they had a re-release of the Goonies. No, it's more they, than that. The, more than thirty years. That would have been nineteen ninety. That's an eighties movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, maybe it's forty years then. It could be. <laughs> yeah, but I, I know it's one of the big anniversaries for yeah. it. But then, um, and then they also have. They have Cutthroat City, which which is I think a movie that that Wesley Snipes and Ethan Hawke, and it's about a heist during during uh, um, Hurricane Katrina. So it's like just after the aftermath, they do a big oh, heist. Yeah. And so so those are the the big five. But and then I was just going to mention what's coming out uh, uh, this this upcoming week. Uh, let me see here. I just so, looked it up. The Goonies is the thirty fifth anniversary. 35th, okay. Yeah, I knew yep. that it was like 30-something, I thought. Yeah, <laughs> nice. And then, so, uh, coming up this week, and I definitely wanted to <laughs> to mention it, because we have Bill and Ted Face the Music, which is yeah. my number one most anticipated movie of the year. Even before COVID hit, before we had all these movie delays and everything, like, I've just been a massive Keanu Reeves fan, and, and just... Uh, Bill and Ted was it's always been one one of my favorite movies from my childhood. I just loved that movie growing up, and so so you, you got Bill and Ted. Then you have New Mutants. Finally, it's finally gonna happen. Like after like three years of delays or whatever it's been, it's like yeah. it's fine. It's, it's finally coming out. And then you have a couple of small ones. I'm just gonna uh, mention them real quick. If anyone wants to kind of look into them a little more, I don't know much about them, but there's one one called the 800. It looks to be about Chinese troops fighting against Japanese in world war two so that's called the 800 right there and then you have one called the courier which is about a courier in in england who's who's uh and it stars stars olga kurilenko and um she she it, it, it is delivering packages as this courier and then she realized that one of them is a bomb and so she trying oh. to figure out what to what to do with it so it's kind of kind of interesting there and then the last movie you you have a movie called still here and that just stars zazie beats and it's a movie about a 12 year old that gets kidnapped in new york city so i mean that's that's all i really know about it so that's kind of your uh weekly roundup for what's coming out this next friday but are there any movies you guys are looking forward to out of that list oh it's easy bill and ted <laughs> face the music san and D, san dimas high school football rules come on oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's going to be, that's, yeah, I'm renting that, but the night, and he's gone, which means somebody probably called him. Yeah, I'm, the night that comes out Friday night, the day before my vacation starts, I'm renting that, like, eating pizza. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, well, yeah, still yeah good. You're, you're, that's the one you're still looking good. forward to the most <laughs> there. Right. That's the one you're looking forward to the most there, Ben, also? Yep, yep. Keanu Reeves, man. He's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially his last few years, you know, Toy Story 4, yeah. uh, um, uh, Always Be My Maybe, which was hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I loved his cameo. And all, you know, Always Be My Maybe is a bit of a surprise that, like, like how – like it kind of a bit of an extended cameo for me, yeah. I thought, and, and and but like like he was great in that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just happy to see Bill, uh, Ted, Theodore Logan, and Bill, uh, Bill S. Preston Esquire back on screen. Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah. be a little wild yeah. stallion and, action. And, <laughs> and don't forget their daughters. I like that's I'm looking forward to the dynamic they bring the movie because one of them is Samara Weaving, who we just recently saw last year in uh, Ready or Not, who's got a yeah, career ahead of her. Yeah, yep. and whose uncle was one of the stars of the Matrix with Keanu. So there you go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So I think that oh, over, uh, over under over under we see station. <laughs> over under <laughs> what like like fifty percent? I don't know how those work. Do you, you think we're gonna okay over under forty percent? We're gonna see in station. Oh, I don't know that. I'd probably say they over too because they're, they're uh -huh. just bringing back all the nostalgia, you know, from the first movie. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta have it all if you're and, like go big or go home, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm with you guys. The over, I'm, I'm on the over. I think we're gonna see at least a cameo by station. Yeah, I'm just sad we're not gonna have any Rufus, but we definitely have kind of like some, like uh, hopefully, it's like yeah. like some descendants of Rufus or something that can, kind of brings back at least like a callback to Rufus. You know, I'm hoping. Well, it's so we're probably going to, and if I'm not mistaken, it's Kristen Schaal who's doing the uh, the Rufus role. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and she she's no slouch herself. So yeah, I, I can't wait to see that Friday, August yep. 28th. It's gonna be beautiful. Oh yeah. Are you going to go to the theater? If it's if it's to my theater, I will definitely go see it. Uh, if not, I'm gonna just rent it. But that is depends on if it's here or not. Right. Yeah, for me, I've already looked it up. I've the the big theater is close to where I live in here in Seattle. They're not open yet. We're still in a phase where that stuff's not open yet. But the, so I have to drive to to Olympia, the capital of Washington, and that's like a forty five minute drive for me. But that's no problem for Bill and Ted. I mean, I'll drive hours for oh, Bill yeah. and Ted. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Yeah, no, no. All right, do you have any more movie news there, uh, Jordan? Uh, no, I think that that just about. But covers it for the week. It's a big week for DC, definitely. So, I mean, I, I definitely encourage anyone who wants to check out any of those trailers or any of the news. It's just all over the the YouTubes and the social media for sure. So, all right. All right. So now we're into the sports section of the uh, of the show, and this is where Jordan and I will break down sports. I'm going to do NHL and wrestling, so the two sports and sports entertainment that I'm most knowledgeable in. Jordan will do base uh, basketball and football, and a little bit of baseball. Please. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay, I'm, so going to, I'm going to um, pop off. Yeah, bring me on when you're ready for me. Uh, you got it. All right. We'll see you in a bit there, Ben. Okay. So we're going to start off with the NHL. And today, well, the day we're recording this is the second day of the NHL semifinals. Because um, the quarterfinals are strapped up. And into the semifinals, we have the series. We've got the Vegas Golden Knights versus my favorite team the vancouver canucks which starts tonight at 7 i believe 7 30 pacific time you have oh, nice. the boston bruins who i'm still a little bitter about 2011 uh the <laughs> boston bruins versus the tampa bay lightning uh dallas versus colorado which had the game won last night won by dallas um so that's going to be a banger series and then you have the new york islanders versus the philadelphia flyers so really you've got four great matches one of them involving a team that nobody would have picked to be there, and that is the Vancouver Canucks, because they beat in six games the defending Stanley Cup champions. And that oh, just yeah. shows how much they've matured in the, la in the last while, because, yeah, nobody would have thought they would have taken taken them. Uh, they sh The champs in games, uh, was it five and six, completely outshot them, outchanced them, yet somehow Vancouver still found a way to win. It was a great series overall. 
for bad, I feel bad for Jordan Bennington, uh, the guy, the goalie who led them to the finals, led the Blues to the final cup last year. Sorry, uh, did not have a great playoff. He did not win a game. Just, this didn't look comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, that's I'm looking forward to that. Um, the Washington Capitals fired their head coach today after two seasons, uh, which is unfortunate for them. Um, Dang. Uh, Brandon Gallagher of the Montreal Canadiens. It turns out he, uh, besides the broken jaw that he got off a hit from Matt Niskanen in the Philadelphia Montreal series, also had a tear in his hip, which is like, it's amazing. Like, nobody, that's some, some things most fans kind of gloss over who aren't hockey fans is that these hockey players are tough. They will play through anything. Like, even if the league's cut off, they'll probably still try to come in and play. Right. Yeah. That, for me, hockey's always like seemed like one of the most brutal sports. I mean, I mean, I, I used to play a lot for fun when I was I was a kid. I'd even go to the ice rink and and, and play. And then we do a lot of street hockey. And like, man, that is it's just a rough, rough sport. I don't I don't know how they survive without like just crazy injuries. I mean, yeah. Oh, it's just conditioning. Like in uh, in twenty in twenty eleven when the Canucks lost, like Ryan Kessler played three series with a torn hip uh, muscle. A torn oh, labrum. Dang. Huh. That yeah, is just crazy. and then you had Bob Bond uh, of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think I can't remember the year. It was one of their last cups. He scored the game-winning goal with a broken foot. He broke his foot earlier in the game. Come back, came back, and scored the game-winning goal. Oh wow, <laughs> that's oh, yeah. crazy. I don't know how they yeah. do that with skates yeah. and everything. Yes, yeah, guts and determination. And you had like players like Richard Zednick and Clint Ballardshuk who had their jugular veins sliced during the game. Right. And they, oh, yeah, I don't know if Zednick ever came back, but I know Ballardshuk. Yeah, yeah, just just the sheer will, determination, guts, and all that stuff that these hockey players have. It, it's amazing. Yeah, serious, <laughs> for real. Yeah, <laughs> and and in terms of wrestling, they debuted yesterday uh, on Friday Night SmackDown the WWE Thunderdome, which is like it's similar to what you uh, described earlier with the DC Fandom. It's like their own little arena. It's got thousands of LED screens along the side of the ring and above the uh, above the uh, above the ring. Um, and you can actually sign up to be on one of the screens as an audience member for uh, that. It, 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 it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but it is definitely an upgrade over what they had been doing previously, which was taping at their performance center with plexiglass around the ring. Right. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I was able to go online and, and check out a few pictures of that, and it, it actually looked really cool. It's a really huge production, and I think it's going to be something that then the end is going to going to look a, a lot better than what they've been doing before. And and I think ultimately, if, uh, like hopefully it'll it'll be even safer uh, uh, for all the the people that are involved with that. I mean, just to be in one spot where they can cannot be be as exposed to the viruses and that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, and they're doing it in the Amway Arena, which is a bigger spot than the Performance Center was. So that's a major yep. plus right there. Yeah, and, yep. and Summer Simon, as we're recording, is going on right now. So it's going to be interesting to see how that delivers with this new setup. Yeah, right. And aren't they saying that, that they're probably going to have some of the wrestlers out in the audience a little bit just to kind of – uh, be able to hype them up a little more, you know, that kind of thing. I know that's what they were doing, but with the setup they have, it's going to be a little hard just because of all the TV screens they have around the oh, arena. Oh, right. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to do that. Yeah, it sounds like maybe a similar setup to the NBA where they, where they just have the whole thing surrounded by TV screens. And, and then yeah. they have fans that are kind of like you can sign up to be a, be like one of the on-screen fans or whatever. That's exactly what oh. it is. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, and so what's going on in the world of basketball there? So let's see. Let me bring it up here. So, so with basketball too, they're also in the midst of their 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 playoff series. I've been watching my favorite team is the Los Angeles Clippers. So I've I've been watching them playing against the Dallas Mavericks. And actually, one of the things that that like I was a little shocked with. So the Mavericks star player Luka Doncic, he went out with with a pretty big ankle injury. Like I oh, saw really? him go go down in the middle of the, of the game and it looked like his his body went one way and his ankle went the other way and i just thought it was broken like when i saw mm-hmm. it but but like apparently though he said he just sprained it and then uh, he's been insisting that like he's good to play like he wants to come back and, and play and, and and usually obviously it's like it's like playoff time and you want to be there for your, your your team and you you have that that drive and that that determination to just be there to just play and to, to help your team win so so most players i think will will do whatever they they can to just play on 
on injuries and just get back on the court, you know, but, but like, we'll see. I think it's really going to come down to a game time decision. I, mm-hmm. I kind of feel like, and it's, and it, so, so uh, the game that they got injured on, they, they ended up losing that, that game. So the Mavericks are, are down two, or let's say one to two against the, the Clippers. And, and so, I mean, he's, He's definitely the heart and soul of their their team. He's their their star player. So I mean, you, you want to see him come back, but at the same time, you you definitely want to be careful. I mean, yeah. some of those things, if you come back too soon, it could it could come into like a season ending or even a uh, potentially a career ending injury. You never know. So you got to yeah, be careful. I, I, I still remember when the Clippers were like the laughing stock of the league. It's it's so it's yeah. still weird to hear that they're one of the best. Yeah, and that's why I actually started following them because. Of, I've always been all about the underdogs, and, and oh, yeah. so when I was a kid, I just like I want to vote for whatever team's the worst team in the league, and I'm going to root for them to win. And then, like here, like so many years later, they're like number one in the league, just about. So yeah, <laughs> yep. And then also, uh, one other story was, was so uh, LeBron James, he of course he makes history again for another time, but but he so. Um, he erupted for 38 points, 12 rebounds, and eight assists in, in their last game in their series. They've been playing the Portland Trailblazers, and I'm all Trailblazers. I don't know if you can see. I got my my Rip yeah, City because I'm all yeah. about the West. Because <laughs> the Lakers are are just one team I can't stand. I've never been a Lakers fan. I, I am a huge Kobe Bryant fan, I will say, but I don't I don't really care for the Lakers all that much. So I always got to root against them. Now, why was fly. that? Was it because they were always winning? Yeah. And so much like how people hate the Yankees. Yep, exactly. It's the same way for me. Like. Like some reason, I just had this thing about teams that always win. The Yankees, the the New England Patriots, like just all those teams that just just win so many times, and I just kind of want to see someone. I'm else with in the there other get... Patriots. I'm with the other Patriots. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, but but he, uh, uh, so LeBron James, he actually broke a couple records. So he um, he became the the um, oldest player in, in the NBA history to reach both 38 points and and eight assists in a game. So. And, he just surpassed Michael Jordan. So Michael Jordan did it when he was 34 years old. LeBron James is 35, and he's still putting up 38 points and eight assists in a game. So, wow. I mean, that's that, that's pretty good. I mean, to surpass the, the the GOAT, Michael Jordan, you know. So. Now, to be fair, if Jordan hadn't retired in 98, that, there, that would have been a record that would have been broken this week. <laughs> right, yep. <laughs> yep, exactly. And then also, too, uh, see, I'm looking to see here – he broke a couple other records. Let me see. So that wasn't the only one I know. It said, "Oh, so it says they moved it moved into second place all time on the on the playoff wins list. So all time in, in NBA history, the with 158. Yeah. Well, no. So LeBron James himself, the oh, oh, player. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. So he's got 158 wins, which he he surpassed Tim Duncan and actually Derek Fisher. So Derek Fisher does it really." Uh, he just this this guy. There's never really been a star, but he's been able to put uh, to position himself on so many winning teams yeah, yeah, yeah. that are, that have consistently made the playoffs. That that he's number one. So yeah, and <laughs> Tim Duncan did all his with the Spurs. Yeah, he did all of his on just one team. Yeah, and yep, and then then also he he um he climbed up to to be number third. Let's see, uh, number third all time in the in the NBA for for three pointers in the. In the playoffs, so he's made 375 three pointers in the playoffs o- over his career. So third all time, and did all that in just one game. He surpassed the, wow. all those three records. So I mean, I've never been a huge LeBron James fan, but I definitely have to appreciate greatness, you know. Oh, yeah. And and then I, I'm just someone who like, despite like like not wanting to see teams win all the time, I, I definitely love watching. The, uh, all the great ones play. Like I love seeing Tom Brady just do his thing, even though mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't want to see the, the, the Patriots win. He, he just, I mean, he's one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. And, and then also I'm just, just consider myself lucky to be alive in the time when Michael Jordan played. And, and I grew up yeah. watching him play. And even though I wasn't a huge Bulls fan, like, like just because he was so amazingly talented, I just, just loved uh, seeing him on the court and watching him play. So. Yeah, the only year I ever watched basketball from beginning to end was the 97-98 season. And, yeah, Michael Michael Jordan, nobody could surpass him. LeBron James is great in his own right. Really, the only thing that's stopping me from actually, like, like loving him is the decision. I think that was one of the stupidest things that's ever happened in the world of sports. Shouldn't yep. have happened. Not a big I know, yeah. 
but I do respect he, LeBron. Uh, besides that, he's a he seems like he's a good dude. Very big on community. Always trying to help out others. Like when he opened that school in his hometown for all the underprivileged kids, it's like the dude's a good dude. He just did something really dumb. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, I know that the whole decision thing really rubbed my wife the wrong way because she's a New York Knicks fan, and and mm-hmm. actually there, there's a huge rumor that that LeBron was actually supposed to go play for the New York Knicks, but then he did the whole a decision thing where he wants to take his his talents down to South Beach or whatever, you know. So, <laughs> so that yeah. just really rubbed her the, well, I rubbed the wrong way. So, the wrong way. yeah, yeah. And then uh, probably the last. Uh, I'm just going to go over this quickly because there's 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 quite a few names, but I'm just going to pick maybe a, a couple of categories. But they they announced some finalists for uh, for award season. So you got got. Uh, I'm just going to go over. So they announced the finalists for the MVP. So the MVP finalists there's there's three players in each in each category. So you have for MVP you have LeBron James obviously. Then you also have Giannis and Tinta Kempo. He won MVP last year, and then you, you have James. Him? He plays for the uh, for the Milwaukee Bucks. So like okay. he was a phenom. I'm not even sure. Sure, I think maybe he came from Greece. I think is what I want to say. But he, but like he has this long name that like like unless you you've heard it pronounced multiple times, you're not going to be able to to pronounce it. That it's about about twenty letters long on his last name. <laughs> yeah. But 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 he is one. And then also James Harden. So those yeah, three. I know who he is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep, and then also you have um, for the rookie of the year, you have John Morant. He's from the Memphis Grizzlies, and and like he's someone who almost brought their their team to the playoffs this year, and and they they barely lost out in like a the the last minute game to the Portland Trailblazers. So in, if they would have won one game, it would have been the the Memphis Grizzlies playing the Lakers this year instead of the Trailblazers. They just came down to mm. one game. Then you have Kendrick Nunn. He's he's from Miami. I don't know a lot about him, but but he's playing down in Miami. And then you have Zion Williamson on the New Orleans Pelicans. And Zion has been awesome to watch this year. He's just one of those electrifying players that just came out of, of college. And he's all about the big dunks, the big like like the big spectacular plays, you know, doing like no look passes and behind the back and all this stuff. And like and like he's he's definitely going to be a star. Like I definitely anticipate Zion to be be an MVP candidate going forward. But I mean, he, he's one of the, the rookies of the year, but I don't know if, if they're going to give it to him just for the fact that he's been injured so much this year. So they may end up giving it to, to John Morant. I don't know. We'll, we'll kind of see how it plays out, but yeah. those are probably two of the uh, biggest categories. I, w- I would say I'll kind of leave it at, at that for, for those two. You can go online to NBA.com and there's a whole bunch of different categories. You have six man, you have defensive player of the year and a bunch of coach of the year, some of those categories, but, but um, let's see, move over into football here. So um, one of the big stories for me is that I saw is this is a whole controversy or surrounding Earl Thomas. So Earl Thomas, he's a safety on the, on uh, the Baltimore Ravens, but he used to play for the Seattle Seahawks. And so I'm a, I myself, I'm a diehard Seattle Seahawks fan. And so, uh, but he just had a lot of controversy. So even when he played for the, the Seahawks, he would always be starting fights in the locker room, getting in, in other uh, players' faces. He'd be trash talking. He'd be, be just causing all these problems. And even off the, the, the field and away from all the team, he'd be causing problems and stuff. And, and so I don't know everything that, that, that happened because they haven't officially released all the information, but he did get, get in a huge fight uh, in the Ravens locker room with his teammate, Chuck Clark, who's another safety. And, and so whatever happened, it was severe enough that they, they released him from the team. He's good. He's gone. So, so good. players and, like that should not, should not be playing professionally. Uh, if you're going to be an ass, it's part of my friend. If you're going to be an asshole to your teammates. <laughs> you're going to be an asshole to everybody. You do not deserve that on the opportunity. There are players far more deserving who want to be there. Right. That's where I stand on that. Yeah. And like the crazy thing is too, like when he left the, the Seahawks, the very last thing that, that he did, he, uh, he had an injury and now he's being carted off the field. He shouted F you to, to coach Pete Carroll and flipped him off. And that was how he left Seattle. Like the yeah, city I of hope, Seattle. So it's like, I hope good he never comes back. Right. Never right. Like back. good riddance. Like, like he's, he has a lot of talent, but, the, but like, I mean, if you're going to act that, that way, then you, you don't deserve it. And, and also he, he left a huge contract behind. He would, 
he was set to make $55 million over four years. And he, and he was in the second year of, uh, of his contract. And now they're, they're just looking to just, uh, just see if they can nullify his contract and just, and, and do whatever they can to not really uh, pay him the rest of that. Because I mean, he's released from the team. So, I mean, it obviously makes yeah. sense. So I don't know what, how that's all going to play. I'm not big. Well, I'm not too knowledgeable about how those contracts work and stuff, but, but, but I know that like, one thing is right. <laughs> yep. And then uh, since he left, there's a lot of teams that have been pretty interested in him, which I'm surprised that with all the controversy surrounding him, but he, but uh, they've had the Dallas Cowboys. They've been the front runner that, that have been, been trying to, to get in touch with them to tr- maybe try and pick him up. Also the 49ers and, and the Houston Texans. So, I mean, we, we may still see him playing this year. I'm not, I'm not totally sure, so we'll kind of uh, wait and see on that one. Yeah, personally, I hope he doesn't ever come back, but that's just me. right. <laughs> yep, and then, and then also the other big story from from NFL. It, this one's a about a week, maybe a week and a half old, but I, I thought that it was big enough to kind of bring up. But 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 quarterback Alex Smith, he's been been cleared to return to to practice with the with the team in Washington. I guess they, they changed their name, so you can't call them what they used to call them. But they're, yeah, what is it, the, the Washington team. football team now? <laughs> yeah, you call them the Washington football team. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, but but Alex Smith had a gruesome uh, uh, injury where he, where he broke his leg during a game. And, like, uh-huh. one of those ones that, like, you see all over YouTube and people are, like, are like replaying it in, in slow motion and stuff, just seeing, like, the, his, his leg break. And, and you can almost see, like, the bone trying to pop out behind his uh-huh. pads and stuff. Like, like it's just gruesome. Yeah, it, it was bad. So I thought that was going to maybe going to be a career-ending injury. And – Alex Smith is someone that I've uh, uh, followed for a, a while because he used to be the quarterback of the um, of the San Francisco 49ers, and, and that's my wife's favorite team. She's a diehard 49ers fan. She has been ever since she was was a little kid. She, she thinks Joe Montana is is a football god, pretty much, and and yeah. like he's he, he is one of the best. I'll, I'll definitely say that for sure. But he, but so Alex Smith was his was his backup quarterback for Montana and Steve Young, and he. Uh, he got moved over to the Kansas City Chiefs, and then from there he got, he got moved over to the Washington Redskins, and that's when he when he broke his leg. And so I thought he was done, but they they cleared him to play, so he's he's cleared to come back. So we'll see what uh, what happens. There's there's some people that can bounce back from injury and, and be a, go back and be a star again, and some people yeah. don't. So you just gotta wait and see. Yeah, here's hoping because injuries like that they don't heal easily. The worst one I ever saw. 2000 and it was actually was it 2001 or late 2000 anyways in wcw the old wrestling company uh sid vicious went to do a le- why I, he did i don't know but he went to do a leg drop off the top rope and when he landed on his one foot you actually see his leg just in like that like, uh, it's one of the more gruesome scenes the I've ever seen. Uh, and it happened live on pay-per-view uh, it's oh first. man yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's almost like the the guy that's playing for the University of Kentucky on the basketball team, I forget his name, but like he was, he was just playing and he went up to make a, a, a block on a, on a guy who was de- defending and he just came down and like, they're just wearing straight basketball shorts. So, so you can see the like bone yeah, and everything. Come on and, and it's a whole leg just folded in, in, in half, like a folding chair, pretty much. Yeah. Like, oh. And wasn't it Ander- <laughs> wasn't a, uh, Anderson Silva that happened to a number of years ago too? There was the USC fighter. Oh yeah, the UFC. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that one. Oh. Yeah, it's just crazy. So yeah, it's like these guys are like, like literally putting their their lives, their bodies on the line, you know. But yeah, I mean, it's for million, it's for millions of dollars in a lot of cases. So, so. <laughs> I, I guess. But anyways, I think we should go on to a much brighter topic, and for that, we're gonna bring Ben back into the room because uh, we're gonna be going over the stuff that happened in the sweaty community. All right. There we go. And I think we both tried to add him at the same time. I'll let you add yourself in. (laughs) Sorry. Okay. Uh, So, yes, now (laughs) we some lighter topics after talking about that before fest. (laughs) So, Ben, what happened in the uh, community this week? Well, I think the biggest thing we heard at the end was Kevin Smith being on and being. Basically interviewed for two hours. <laughs> That's all right. It was insane. They thought they only had him for what a half hour, and he ended up like being there for like three or two hours. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. In, that's... in a thing. Yeah. That that yeah. man, he knows how to wax poetic. I uh, oh, I had the I had does. the fortune before I moved back to my hometown to see him and Scott Mosier do a, a recording of Smodcast in Vancouver. And oh, yeah, nice. man, that guy knows that guy knows how to talk. The only missed regret I have from that was it was July and I decided to cosplay as him in a big heavy green trench coat. Oh, oh. <laughs> what what yeah, him so. having Kevin Smith movie? Um it still has to be chasing Amy. After all this time, it's still chasing Amy. Oh, cool. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, for me, it's definitely mall rats. Like I'm, I'm like definitely oh, yeah. with Christian Harloff whenever he brings up when he's like, tell him Steve, Dave, like all those lines and and stuff are just like, yeah. And also the cameo from, from Stan Lee in that movie is, was, 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 was pretty epic for, yeah. because at the time when, when, when it came out, that's kind of when, when I was like, like, like just really getting into comic books, hardcore and more like, like I kind of read a few, but I wasn't really big into them. So it, I was just absorbing all that, that like comic book love and the things they talked about. So, okay. what about you, Ben? My name is Ivan Moment. Oh, this is going to sound really weird, but I really like that and really make a porno. I like that one oh, too. Yeah. That one was funny. I that one's really hilarious. Like that. Yeah, that, that was a, that was a great one. Reddit Ralph's cameo with Justin Long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I love the story oh. that 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 Kevin Smith told about about, about Justin Long for Zach and Mary yeah. when they make a porn right. out. How like he he had like a really bad chest cold and he was like really sick and, and like his his voice just didn't really sound the same as it usually does. So he just decided to just do this deep voice and like talk really yeah. low like this. And then like like Kevin Smith just liked what he was doing and just kind of and just let him go with it and so uh, in the movie you have him talking like that because i always thought it was a little weird why he talked like that but now it all makes sense <laughs> yeah i uh and, and, and um i have a hot take Van and ralph okay. Van and ralph is my favorite superman Ooh, that is a hot take <laughs> he's my number two he's my number two first me it'll always be chris Reed, but brandon ralph did a damn fine job in superman i will say that um what did you guys think of uh oh my favorite story that kevin smith has ever told about zach and mary was how it's basically the making of the movie clerks but in the end he sleeps with scott Mosier. <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> uh, what did you guys think of uh james on bob reboot if you guys have seen it yet i haven't seen it yet okay i've I'll seen it and I actually loved it. Like, so like I was pleasantly surprised because like, so I grew up in a, in a very conservative household. Like I grew, I grew up Mormon in, in the Mormon church. And so those weren't really the kind of movies we really watch very yeah, often. Yeah. Like, like most of Kevin Smith's movies wouldn't be allowed in my household as a kid, but, oh, but yeah. so, <laughs> so when, when, it, when Jane and Silent Bob strike back, when that came out, I kind of avoided it. I was just like, no, that's so vulgar. Like, I'm not going to watch that. But then like, Years went went by and I finally watched it and I was like, you know, these these two dudes are actually pretty hilarious, pretty entertaining. Yeah. And then when I saw uh, uh, the Jane Silent Bob reboot, like I was actually floored. Like it, the movie was like funny and it had a good uh, good uh, story with the whole road trip aspect of yeah. him going to to it find took a his, massive his, right his turn daughter. That I didn't expect. Yeah, and then it had and a lot of heart to it too. Yeah, and the yeah. Ben Affleck seems best. So Ben, I highly recommend you watch it because it. Essentially, that movie will remind you why you love Kevin Smith. Yeah, I will. yeah, oh, it's oh, on Amazon it Prime for sure. It's on Amazon oh, Prime if you have that. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's so good. Uh, oh yeah, like I said, the Ben Affleck scene. I'm happy that they were able to mend their fences and to reunite for that movie um, because yeah. it's it's it can't it's not a Jane Silent Bob movie anymore if you don't have Ben Affleck in the cameo or something. <laughs> Right. Uh, <laughs> you, yep. You gotta have him. <laughs> you, gotta yeah. have, you gotta have Ben Affleck, and then probably some Jason Lee somewhere too. I'd say. <laughs> and he, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So pretty much, you get a you get a cameo from most of the main people you've seen over the years. You do see like Steve, Dave, and uh, Fanboy Walt and uh, Brian. Oh, you, yeah. uh, <laughs> you see, obviously, you see Brody. You see Alyssa. You see uh, Holden. I don't. You don't see Banky though, which I actually was surprised at. Yeah. One of the things to it is that so i was trying to find everywhere that i could go see the jane silent bob bob reboot Road i was like, looking for like for like theater show times where i could go see it and when they weren't showing it but then 
I found out this because because Kevin Smith was just financing all the distribution yeah. himself, and so he was just going on on tour, kind of touring the movie, and I. And so I actually got some tickets to go see it because they were coming to Seattle. And then COVID-19 hit and so oh. I to go see it. So, so yeah, I was kind of bummed if, about that. If you guys that. ever but, get the chance to see him live, man, do it. Yeah. I definitely plan mm. to someday for sure. Yeah. Okay. So what else? what else is there from this week there, Ben, on the content creator I mean, side? It really, it was a really quiet week. Um. Oh, everyone we follow basically did recaps of the Fat Gnome yesterday. Yeah, um, yeah. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, I mean, we should probably talk a little small down, right? Yeah, sir. Should we not, uh, should we leave the, um, the throwdown out of it or just, and just talk about the public matches? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, well, what did you guys think? Um, I, the matches were were all right. Like I, they were just regular first round matches. There wasn't anything majorly surprising uh, for me in them. What about you guys? Oh yeah, uh, no, the I only mean, one. Well, for me, the thing that always gets to me is that like all these matches are like they they've been pretty close and and they didn't. I mean, a lot of them that are, they really come down to the five pointer, like like especially on so like you had that. You had the the um, Jader match uh, against Jim Vavita. So I thought Jim Vavita was going to win. I thought he was going to take the whole thing. And then he missed his, his five-pointer, I think it was, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. And, and then so uh, Jader ended up winning it. So that's when I was surprised at. And then also the the uh, the uh, yeah, Brendan Meyer versus Alonzo Duralde, that came into the five-pointer as well. So you had a couple matches that were really just down to the wire. <laughs> yeah. What about for you, Ben? Yeah, I mean, I guess my biggest surprise was that Sabrina didn't win. Really? But, yeah, I don't know why. I thought, I guess it was all the hype. I thought she would have done a little bit better, but it was her first time. So, I guess she'll improve next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, if you know, if there is a next time, I hope there is, just because of all the, all the stuff that happened this week. Um, I personally do not condone what happened. Uh, mm. That was. I mean, do you, are you familiar with what happened this week, brother Jordan? No, I'm not. Look, what's what's going on? Okay, so there was some some ass hat. Well, I'm going to say his name right here, Ben Wellington. Um, <laughs> he went after Sabrina and made fun of her well not really made fun of her looks but basically said she was a no talent hack and the only reason she got fast tracked into the slowdown was because of her looks and everybody went after him rightfully so in my opinion um yeah that type of stuff you you should say if you're gonna be critical don't be a dick about it and that's right. what he was and it was not good and I hope I hope 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 it does not deter her from coming back. Because it has yeah. a lot of people in the past and I hope she's she does come back. I think that's one yeah. of the things that, that if you play in the schmodown, I mean, you kind of have to have thick skin. I mean, because there are those kind of, like you say, asshats out there that are, that would just say those those stupid things. And and we and we all love Sabrina. We want to see her come back. But it, but I mean, it's kind of like like it's kind of like how how Christian said. Like I was watching one of the old. Uh, um, um, Sen lies from a couple weeks ago, and he was saying that like if you lose, then you're then you're probably not gonna be playing for a little while. And if you if you win, you're obviously you're gonna get more more matches. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I mean it's just kind of the way way he has to run his business, and it, and oh, I get for that. Sure. So for sure, it's but, just if you're gonna if you're gonna criticize someone, just don't don't go that route. Like that was right. just, that was just wrong. Like reading some of his comments was just wrong. Yeah, I get his opinion, and he has the right to free speech. But unfortunately, you don't have the right to avoid consequences, and that's basically what happened. Because everybody, including myself, went after. Yeah, <laughs> shoot. Yeah, like I probably would have done the same thing if I would have heard about it. I just wasn't like like yeah. calling all the comments. So yeah, and it's one of those things. But... That, it's unfortunately, it's like it's uh, something that still happens. That always happens towards the women, and that is not correct. That should no, happen. Definitely not. Huh? Yeah. I would agree. No. Okay, um, so anything else there, Ben? No, I think that's it. There's a big match. Coming up, right? 
Damn right. Damn and Kevin Smith versus Chris Jericho. And that one yeah. is going to be open Ooh. to the public. So yeah. you yes. want to be a patron That's to awesome. watch that. And uh, me and my boys over at Trolls of the North, we're actually going to be doing our very first live stream for that following the match. Uh, oh, covering cool. it. It'll be the first time all four of us have been on screen. I can't wait because huge wrestling fan, been a fan of Chris Jericho since his Lionheart days in uh, WCW. Obviously, as we all talk, Kevin Smith fan too. So it's going to be it's going to be a show. Nice. Yeah. Who, who do you think? Who do you think's got? We're going to do predictions now. Who do you think wins? I think I think Smith. Okay, Jordan. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's going to be be close. Kevin Smith showed a lot of knowledge when he went on to SCN Live, but I'm not, I don't know. Like, I'm gonna probably go with Jericho. I think. I'm I'm gonna go with Smith, but just with a slight edge. I think he's selling himself was selling himself short on SCN, but I think he's gonna win. Okay, don't forget, guys. Kevin Smith beat Dan Moore in movie fight. Yes. That oh, was one of my That's favorite right. movie fights mm-hmm. moments. Mine yep. too. Yeah, where it's like, no. how do you argue against Triumph of the Wills? Like, oh that was God. genius. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's too bad it happened in a bygone era that we can't really reminisce about too much, but yeah, uh, it was a great moment. And Elijah Wood was like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I still watch it from time to time. Oh, really? I haven't gone yeah. back and watched it since it happened. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. I'll send it to you. Oh, yeah. The only, fun. the only movie fights I've ever gone back and watched was the infamous drunk movie fights episode. Yeah. Where Ken exactly. had to go yeah. do shows right afterwards. Yep. And <laughs> Ken completely nailed here. the news. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that... Uh, how it's gonna be one of my other... favorite schmoes and moments of all time, yep, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> how about how about the night falls movie fight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh god, Chris, yeah, that just shows how good of a talker Christian is where he's able to convince everybody that that was a real freaking movie. <laughs> he, <laughs> right. he always yeah. Oh, uh, there's a yep. you know that's that's a good topic we could have for uh, our favorite section at some point. Top five movie fights moments. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah, you go. <laughs> yeah, for something down the line. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah. And so on that note, that's a that was a an intentional segue. It's time for our favorites top five this week. And who would like to introduce the topic this week? Yeah. I will. Okay, Ben. Yes, because yes, it was your idea. Oh. It was my idea. We did this week our top five TV shows of all time. So who wants to kick it off? Uh, what All right. was your idea? We'll start with you. Then. Okay. And real and quick, I was going to ask you guys, back. am I frozen for you guys? Because on my screen, I'm looking like I'm frozen on the screen. I don't yeah, know if you're that's... frozen. You're frozen. So I'm going to try something. I'm just going to gonna shut off my cam and see. Nope. <laughs> nope <laughs> well, you might just have to listen to me, but I'm, hey, well, I'll be there You can still see your pretty face, <laughs> so it's all good. So Ben, yeah. since it is your, yours, we will Let's start with you. Okay, I was torn for my number five between two. It's no cat pick, but mm, I say the it's office. Tough. The office. Okay, okay. that's that's, number five. that's also on my list. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Office is a classic. It, yep, classic. Yeah. It, it's so funny. Every character has a moment in every episode. Yeah. And the side characters are funny. Great love story with Jim and Pam for the oh, most part. Sure. My Steve and main Steve Carell. And yeah, and it's. And then it ended great. It had a great ending. Yes. It, yes, not it did. That it. Many, not that many shows can say that. Yeah, and I'm of yeah. the I'm of the belief I personally there did not like. Uh, I'm just gonna say this. This is my number four, so we'll, we can still talk about it now. Um, it. I personally do not like what they did with Andy in the last season. I liked Andy yeah. prior to that. I really didn't like how they made him a jerk. Um, I'm going to 
confess, I actually only saw the show recently. I uh, actually binged it during the first part of quarantine. That was the first time I'd ever seen it. Oh, really? Um, yeah. I, I, here's the thing. I tried to watch it was on, but at that time, my sensibilities were different, and I couldn't get into it. But okay. now, watching it, I love the show to pieces. The only reason it's not higher up is because I've only seen it once through. Um, okay. Yeah, Creed is probably my one of... I'd probably say my favorite character in the show just because of how <laughs> yeah, yeah. random he is. Weird, but there's yeah. so many quotable moments. There's so many beautiful scenes. Uh, the wedding dance, one being one of them. Um, yeah. My friend, my friend Jacqueline, who is the band teacher at the local high school, she's always every week. It's a different office quote on her board. Yeah, right. it's because of her. I finally got to. I watched the show. Um, yeah, I can't say anything bad about the show at all. Other than the first season, it is a little shaky, but even then, it's got its moments. Right. Yeah. See, for me, like, like, so I'm someone who, who watched The Office from day one. I watched it live. Like, I remember watching the premiere mm. when it actually premiered on NBC. And so, like, I was one of those ones that they were just watching it week to week on TV. And and I loved everything uh, uh, about it. I thought that it that it kind of took a little step down once Steve Carell left. I, I will say, but because for me, I love the character Dwight, but I kind of find him better as a second to to michael scott just like an the like assistant to the yeah. general manager that like sidekick you know so so when they kind of made him more uh, in like a lead role i mean i still enjoyed it it's, it's still fun but but like i definitely felt a big hole and not having steve carell there like he's definitely for me the heart and soul uh, of that show but but you had so many talented people on the show that that there's still definitely enough to, to just carry it through and actually one of my favorite things is when when steve carell left when they're trying to find uh like all the different bosses that they're gonna have, and they brought yeah. in all these different cameos. They brought, and like one of my favorites is when they bring in Will Ferrell, and, it, and he literally dies trying to, to like dunk on the basketball hoop or something. Yeah. It's like, it's like wow, and like he he tried to pull off a dunk, and that was that was it, that was the end. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a great show. Have you guys uh, heard of the Office Ladies podcast? Yeah, I knew you were yeah. do it. It's I good. I I fell it. behind. Um, but it's good, and they bring on people every week who were involved in the show uh, to talk about it, and it is a great insight. And uh, they, on their Instagram uh, feed, they always share pictures from behind the scenes stuff. I I recommend for everybody out there to listen to that podcast. Right, right. Yeah, that's yeah, something that I would definitely listen to. So I'm, I haven't yet, but but I love it. I love me a good podcast. It's some, especially when I'm working, like working overnight. So yeah. I just throw headphones on, and I always have a podcast going or something. So. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and also Creed Batten as also uh, as a musician, and his stuff is on YouTube. So uh, not on YouTube on uh, Apple Music. So the song he plays in the final episode, um, "All the Faces," is available on on uh, iTunes, and I bought it as soon as I heard it. It's such a beautiful song. Oh, cool! Yeah, I'll definitely have yeah. to check that out. Yeah. Okay, Jordan, what's your number five? So. First off, because th this was a tough decision for, for me. For some reason, when I picked my top five favorite movies, I could decide. But on TV, it's yeah. like there's a there's a, like a top ten that it could easily any one of them could be in my top five. So I'm just going to give just a quick shout out. We don't have to discuss it. I'm just going to mention it. But that's the show Fringe. So that's one okay. of my favorite shows. But, but we'll move in. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. but, but then going into my actual top five is the show Heroes. So. Okay. That show is like something that, that like I've always been into superheroes, but my, my favorite type of superhero is just the, like the everyday a person who just ends up getting superpowers. And like, what would you do if you just randomly uh, uh, found out that you had some superpowers that, that, you, that you could run as fast as the flash or you could read people's minds or you could fly or just whatever it is. And so I thought that was what's awesome. And, and actually I think that, that that hero season one to me is like, like the greatest season of, of TV, like in the history of TV ever. Like, like I just like, I just adore season one of, of Heroes. Like, and also, I'm a very character uh, uh, based person. I, I I just love things that are that are very character driven. And so, like, I'm just big big fans of like Hiro Nakamura, Peter Petrelli, uh, um, uh, Matt Parkman. Who's actually I've. Uh, Going to different comic cons and conventions, I've actually had a chance to meet meet Milo Ventimiglia. He was awesome, and then I got a picture with 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 Greg Grunberg 
where he was actually reading my mind just like in Heroes and stuff. So that was nice. pretty awesome. <laughs> yep. So I, I, I have to confess, I've never seen the show. Me, me neither. Oh, yeah, you need to treat yourself like for sure. Like that that show is like something that like if you've never seen it, like like and you're a friend of mine, I'll just like go out and like buy you the whole season and be like, You need to watch this now. Here's the whole season, you have no excuses. Now watch yeah. it. <laughs> so okay. yeah, that's my number five. So my number five, um I've got a little bit of a personal connection to just because it was a, a show filmed in Vancouver. Um, it was a show that for the first four years were my final four years of high school. Um, I was able to actually see a stunt filmed while on the sky train in Vancouver because the set for the city was right beside the sky train. Uh, it is a show where we explore the origins of early Clark Kent. It was Smallville. No, okay. That, that yeah. And, my number four. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I love that. There you show. go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I actually have had a hard time going back and watching, doing the whole binge since the show ended. Um, I'm not sure why. I get like three seasons deep and <laughs> I'm done. But that show at that time brought out things I never thought I would see on screen. Like you saw the Justice Society of America. You saw yeah. uh, the first live action depiction of Doomsday. You saw Brainiac. You saw all these villains. You saw Green Arrow for the first time on TV. You saw an early version of the Justice League. You had someone who I still have a massive crush on, Erica Durant's and Lois Lane. Um, yeah. The writing on that in the middle seasons were great. Once it slipped into the more comic book stuff is when I really dived deep into it. Um, like I said, it was filmed in Vancouver, and so I was lucky enough to see a film, a, a scene from the final season film, uh, a stunt, because the Metropolis set was right beside the Sky Train. They since torn it down, and it's now a housing development. But yeah, you would oh. drive by, and it was the Metropolis Street set that you always would see in the show. So wow. I saw, I saw um, them filming uh, Clark Kent rescuing the helicopter when he goes in, into the future in the final season. Oh I saw, my saw that. God. Yeah. Oh nice. <laughs> um, I saw, I saw Allison Mack walking on that set one day on the Sky Train. Um, Near where I worked is where Smallville Junior High School was, or Smallville High School was. So you can actually see that from the Sky Train too. Um, oh, nice. oh yeah, it's just so. I watch. That's one of those shows along with like Supernatural. It's like I can watch. Like I know where that is. I know where that is. I know where that is. <laughs> I, nice. It, it's this. Yeah, I, I just loved it. It was you know you saw a really good representation of Zod in the show. It it it, it took the Superman mythos and put a new fresh take on it that for me for the most part worked. And yeah, I, I love that show to pieces. Like I said, unfortunately, I haven't been able to binge it since, but it'll always hold a special place in my heart, and that's why it's at number five. Well, I'm, I'm nice. going to talk, can I talk about it? I mean, yeah, because it's four. your number four, so go ahead. Yeah. Um, I echo pretty much everything you said. In fact, yeah, that, I graduated that same week he did. It oh, nice. Wonderful. Funny. So you're you're let me ask, born in nineteen eighty seven? Yep. Yeah, same yeah. here. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, he, we graduated the same year. Yeah. Yeah. So it gave us a mess next to the two. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. And then yeah. 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 Brainiac. Yeah. I think the only Brainiac, but gave us I loved the Christopher Reeve episode when he showed up in season two. Was that a? Oh yeah, my yeah, yeah. episode. Yeah, I. It's a beautiful moment. Oh yeah, you believe I the man. Love, uh, I love the passing of the torch. Yeah, you now we're that close. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, one little piece of information since I've been to so many Comic Cons, I've probably been to like ten of them or 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 more. But but I was actually able to meet Michael Rosenbaum, so some Lex Luthor there. So nice. Nice. so actually, so I got an autograph, but I actually sent it to one of my best friends back home because as much as I'm a a fan of Superman, I, I I've always been kind of more of a DC guy and or, or not DC, a Marvel guy, and so he's. He's just a massive, massive Superman, and, and like he was obsessed with with Smallville. So I, I sent him that that autograph in the mail, and he literally like freaked out and was I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah he, yeah." he was pretty happy. <laughs> the moment where they revealed the Justice Society table was like, <laughs> "Yeah." 
Yeah. Um, uh, it's awesome. a good show. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet you we would not have the Emmerverse if it wasn't for a small mouth. No, I'm, I would take that bet. I'm with you. Yeah. We got, <laughs> we got to introduce Queen Elwell in small mouth. That's why we had Elwell. And Justin yeah. Hartley did a great job. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. The yeah. I remember the yeah. I I, uh, I actually own uh, a prop from that movie from that show. Oh yeah, right. And yeah. it's not like it? a physical prop that one of the characters had, but when the show closed, they had a big sale of all the props, uh, right. like set pieces and stuff. So I bought uh, um, uh, a, a raincoat that you wear to like a gala or something like that. That was from the in the show. Oh, oh cool. Nice. Yeah. How, yeah. How you it? Oh yeah, I've worn it a few times. I've worn it on stage. I've worn it for costumes. I've worn it out. Uh I also had bought uh, a suit which unfortunately doesn't fit me anymore. Uh -huh. But uh yeah. No, I, I even bought a Smallville High t-shirt which the logo on it is the original Superman logo. The Smallville oh, High wow. School logo is the original Superman logo. Oh, okay. That's cool. Right. I didn't even know that little piece of yeah. information. So that's cool. Yeah, I don't, unfortunately don't uh -huh. have a presentation of it right now. But yeah, it was that. So that was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah so yeah, that was my number five. That was Ben's number four. So that'll bring down to your number four there, uh, Jordan. All right. So my number four is is actually once I saw multiple seasons is when I really uh, fell in, in love with it. I mean, I liked it from the beginning, but I f really loved it. Well, it was actually Stranger Things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so especially when I saw season three from Stranger Things, because that just really uh, solidified my love for the, for uh, for David Harbour's character. So, mm -hmm. and, the, and that show just like, like, um, Hopper, like, like, that character just always blew me away, especially the relationship he was able to build w between him and, and Eleven, too. So like, yeah. it was just that kind of father-daughter relationship. And I just love all the nostalgic 80s vibe. I'm a child of the 80s, so, I mean, just, just anything 80s, early 90s, that kind of thing. And then just, like, seeing the ragtag group of kids just, just kind of riding the, the streets on on their bikes. I mean, that's my whole childhood. And, like, I'm just... It, it kind of makes me sad that like the kids of our generation don't really have that same experience. Everyone's on their iPads and, and, and like their, their tablets or whatever, and they, or their phones. And it's like, like when I was a, a kid, that's what we did for fun. We just, we just went around in the neighborhood on our bikes. We got into trouble. We, we yeah. just like did all kinds of crazy. Like we're, we were putting up, up ramps and I, in the middle of our cul-de-sac and going off jumps, just doing all kinds of that kind of stuff. So, I mean, just the whole story that they were, able to build it. I mean, it was just, I thought it was, was amazing. I thought what the Duffer brothers did was, was just like something like, I don't know, that I'd never seen before. I mean, I'd seen all the, all the nostalgia, but I mean, just to bring it back in that type of way, it was just, it was just awesome. Yeah. Me. What are your thoughts on Stranger Things there, Ben? I, I don't love it. Not, 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 it, it, it's a solid show. I like it. It, um, yeah. I love that moment, the singing moment in season three. Yeah, the never ending yeah. story. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. 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 Oh, he really and does I mean, have a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah I'm, 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 so I'm looking uh, forward to the next season. Yeah, I'm with yeah, you. Sure. Uh, there. I'm with you there, Ben. Like, I enjoy it. I, I, it's not my top ten. It's I actually binged the whole series when season three came out because I actually hadn't watched it prior to that, and I cannot would not wait for season four to see where they go with the whole Russian storyline. Yeah, me yeah. too. No. Yeah, and also my 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 avatar for like most things I do on online, like my PlayStation, Xbox, like even my Netflix avatar is. It's actually Dustin from Stranger Things. So if you see oh, yeah. me on online, I'll have that avatar. <laughs> oh yeah, him and uh, him and the, the little girl in season three were, were a great match. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that, the girl that he met met at summer camp. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so my number four was The Office, and we've already talked about that. So we're gonna go into Ben's number three. Okay, my number three. I'm kind of cheated. Oh. Ooh. Okay, my number three, Seinfeld, and I had to put him. 
community album. Yes, yes, that's a good pick. Uh, that's one that like it just missed my top five. I wanted to put uh, it in there, but. <laughs> It's not really a sequel to Seinfeld, but it kind of feels connected. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, there's so many relatable moments that like just yeah. relate to everyday life. <laughs> and the way they made George Costanza, Larry David, was genius. Right? <laughs> it, yeah, that's... I'm sorry, go ahead. It, it is a real, most shows are really, really funny. And I couldn't decide between the two of them. So I connected them. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, that's <laughs> fine. I did Rocky 1 and 2 last week, so I'm okay with yeah. that. Um, Seinfeld yep. is a show I cannot binge. I've tried. I like the moments. I like watching the clips. George Costanza is one of my spirit animals. But I've never, <laughs> I never watched more than like a dozen episodes. Really? Oh man! Really? Yeah. yeah, but I own I own every single season on DVD, and it and some that like whenever my my a younger brother Cade when he comes to visit, like he always wants to watch Seinfeld. He's like, we gotta gonna throw on some Seinfeld, and, and I'll ask him which one. And then I'll say any of them; it doesn't matter. Just put on any episode, and it'll be great. There'll be so many laugh out loud hilarious moments yeah. that it, that's like it really doesn't matter. So it's just like just surprise me. Just put something on and. And we always have a great time. And there's so many quotable moments. Probably like our our favorite episode is the shrinkage episode. Like, yeah. I was in the pool. I was in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> and she's yeah. like, it shrinks like a frightened turtle. And, and, and she's like, why? It just does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah, classic. I, I, I honestly don't know what it is, but yeah, I've I've watched this few try to watch a few episodes back to back and I just can't do it. But get me don't get me wrong, show me a clip and I'll love it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, so yep. So you got something else to add there, Ben? No, uh, that was it. Okay. So on to your numero trois there, Jordan. All right. <laughs> My numero trace is so my top three, well, well actually, my, my number one's pretty th firm, but my number two, they keep flip-flopping. So at the moment, I'd have to say my number number three it is uh, Breaking Bad. So that would be my number never three. Never seen it. Never, never seen, seen Breaking it. Bad. Oh, it's my God. First episode. Yeah, it's a little in intense especially like like on the first couple episodes it gets intense quick and so you're just kind of like like whoa like i don't know if i can be down for this ride like this is a crazy ride you know but but like uh, my list, my way. yeah but like that show it just has some of the most amazing acting brian cranston and 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 aaron paul and actually so like a little a little known fact so so aaron paul actually grew up in idaho and and so did I. So he went to my my rival high school. I've actually been over to Aaron Paul's house, but but at the time we weren't really friends. So like I probably saw him in like passing, but like it, like he was a friend of like one of my friends. And so like we were, we were kind of like in the same group. We probably even hung out like once or twice, but like I didn't I don't really like have a, like a real memory of it. But like yeah. I, I remember seeing the the house where he, where he uh, grew up, and I definitely remember going to that house. And so. That was pretty cool. And then Aaron Paul, he he's a really cool guy. He'll come, so like during Breaking Bad, he would come back and premiere a lot of his episodes. We, we have an old theater that's in Boise that's called the Egyptian Theater, and, and he would premiere a lot of his episodes there. And then um, he'll come back from from time to time and you know do these cool little scavenger hunts, or like he'll just go into Twitter and then he'll give little clues, and then. Uh, He'll give away prizes or like give away like a piece of memorabilia from the set or like even like an opportunity for a picture with them or just whatever. So like he's a lot of fun, but but like the show as a whole though, it's just like I remember just watching so many episodes every week and I was just glued. I was just on the edge of my seat. I'm just like, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Are they gonna make it out? Or like like I was just like just like glued like the whole time and just man, just like and for me like I don't know if it's like this for everyone, but like it's very rewatchable for me. Like. Like, even mm -hmm. though I know it's going to happen, like, I can just go back and I can rewatch and just have 
have a blast. I actually got to rewatch the whole thing. I'm with my wife after we got married. She hadn't seen it, so we we rewatched the whole series, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. Well, it's on my list, but it's not a show I'm actually in a hundred hurry to get to watch, but it is on my list. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, it's my award. That's my number one. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. <laughs> good. Good pick. Good yeah. pick. Then I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now so here, number three. Okay, my number three. This was for a long time, up until a few years ago, my number one. Does everybody know what time it is? Really? Tool time. Tool wow. time. And now for your host, Tim, the tool man, Taylor. I am a nice. been for tools. Fan of <laughs> yep. I watched that throughout my childhood. I rewatched the see. I own every season on DVD. I rewatched it numerous times. The humor for me never gets old. Tim always screwing up. Uh, Al, you know, uh, I used to, I, I worked with a guy named Tim, and every once in a while he'd say something, and I would go, "I don't think so, Tim." Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah no, right. I, I just, that show for me is timeless, and it'll never, never grow old. Um, to me, Tim Allen is Tim Taylor is my favorite TV dad. Wow. Give him a little sound effects. He's like, he's like, oh, or oh, 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 oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <run>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my favorite <laughs> moment in the show was he uh, it was season four or five. I think it was season four. Uh, he, uh, once again, he shoots his mouth on uh, tool time, and he says that women nagging are like clocking hens. And so <laughs> fast forward to home, he's trying to get Jill's engagement ring out of the gutter, and he's got Mark dropping. Uh, tennis balls down the chute and jill walks in I and the wife's like yeah did, did you see the show and she's like oh yeah in front of all my fellow students and Tim's <laughs> like hey mark can you drop another ball down and jill grabs a croquet ball and he just <laughs> ow mark, i said that tennis ball not a croquet ball and she's like, she's like, oh, that was like oh hi honey i mean honey <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think so i love that show to pieces I think some of my favorite episodes were always the Halloween episodes. I think I think yeah. The, yeah. the Home Improvement did some great Halloween episodes, especially when he walks down in the basement. He always hits his head on on the pipe yeah. there every time he walks <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. I love it whenever he would get into the uh, the war of Christmas lights with Doc Johnson, and every once oh, in a yeah. while he'd walk into the steam with like something more ridiculous. Ah, uh, yeah. No, that, like I said, that show for years was my number one. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that. That like solidified that show as like one of my top like favorite shows because it's definitely probably in got to be in my my top ten. But but the episode where they had the Beach Boys on, I remember, and, yeah. and like he was saying that that like one of the Beach Boys was was like was like one of of uh oh, what was the neighbor's name? The guy that like Wilson like, Wilson. Wilson, Wilson, Wilson Junior. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Wilson. Like he was saying that. Like one of the Beach Boys was like one of his family members or something like that. So well, they had most the Beach of them Boys were over. because they're all <laughs> most of them original Beach Boys were related. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, when I was a kid, the Beach Boys were like my favorite band. So like that was the, like the first actual mainstream uh, like music group of any yeah. kind that, that I ever fell in love with. Probably when I was like 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 three four years old. Like I I would always be just just. Uh, Jamming out to the Beach Boys is my first actual yeah. CD that I ever had. So when I saw them oh, wow. on there, I'm like, all right, they're going to pay a tribute to the Beach Boys. This is a good show. I'm down yeah. for this. <laughs> my favorite thing about the show was how often Tim would screw, would always confuse what Wilson was saying. Like yeah. one, mo one moment was like, where Wilson's like, do you mind if I ruminate for a moment? And Tim's like, yeah, just go use the bushes over there. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'd always confuse it. And and especially when he's like trying to teach a lesson to like one of his kids or, or like even say it back to his wife or like trying to repeat something that like Wilson said yeah. and totally oh, going yeah. backwards. <laughs> one of the ones I use the most is whenever somebody tells me Dos Vidanya, I say, and a do -si do to you too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tim Allen is one of my, my favorite actors. Do you watch Last Man Standing at all? Like, are you a fan I of that I watched one? all of the last season and yes, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. Yeah. So like me and my wife, that's one of the, of our favorite shows because like, we have a hard time agreeing sometimes on what to watch, but that's one where we're 100. We we yeah. we've seen it all. We're waiting for the next season. Nice. Okay, so that's my number three. Uh, we're okay. on to your number two, Ben. Right. Well, I'll be honest. 
A few years ago, I would have been nervous saying this as my number two. Uh-oh. But something else has come out I mean this. Then I think of a new animal. <laughs> Lost. I really? Lost. That's, That's another active. one. I, I hate to break your heart. That is another one I have not seen a single episode of. Well, spoiler uh, alert, that's my number two also is Lost. <laughs> perfect. Extended fuck. Yeah. Have at her, boys. <laughs> yep. That show is incredible, but you go first, Ben, and you talk about it. I love it. Uh, when, yeah, I love all the characters. I know it had a controversial ending, but the show went about the characters. But yep. It ended with the characters. I didn't need no answers. I loved it. I loved all those flashbacks. I loved, well, damn it. I don't want to give anything away. I love <laughs> something oh. that happened at the end of season three. I'm, okay, I'm, a, yeah. I'm aware, uh, don't get me wrong, it's been long enough, I'm aware of a lot of the things that happened, so you don't need to do the spoiler thing for me. It's the, the, <laughs> the statute limitations on that went out a long time ago. <laughs> all right. I love yes. those flashbacks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, yeah, Lost for me was, was just huge. So, like, actually, one of my best friends growing up in, 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 in high school, so actually my my two best friends actually set them up together to date, and they ended up getting married to each other. And so we would go over, and we'd have these Lost parties. So, like, every week when, when it came on, we'd just make dinner, and we'd, I'll be be watching Lost every week and just, like, hanging on the edge of our seat, trying to figure out what all the mysteries are. Because every week, it's like they come up with some new mystery, and, and like, you need answers. Like, are they going to answer this? Are they going to answer that? What's going on with this hatch? Like, what's going on with the Dharma initiative? Or what's all, you know, but, but like, but all the different characters also, too. Like, like probably... My favorite character was always Charlie. Like, I, I was related to, to Charlie really well. But I also love Sawyer, too. Like, like what are your... What are some of your favorite characters, Ben? Who do you like? <laughs> Charlie, Sawyer, De Desmond. Desmond is my oh, yeah. favorite character. Desmond's awesome. He's he's one of my favorites, too, especially the relationship with Desmond and Penny, which just, like, oh. like just blew my mind. Like, I got goosebumps whenever they, they finally were able to meet up again or, like, have that conversation on the phone. Oh. Oh, he just gave me goosebumps. Char Charlie and Claire. They, oh, yeah, yeah. Goosebumps. The Quans, there are there's not one bad character in this show. Everyone is great. Yeah, no, everybody's great. So it's just hard because I love Hurley too. I love Jack, Kate. I love all of them. Okay, Even show the bad squad. guys. Breaking Bad. Uh, yep. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So and like also too like so that was one of the the shows my wife hadn't seen that that I. That I showed to her after we got and I got married, and like she didn't even mention to me, she's like, "We need to watch Lost again sometime." Like, like with just the whole series, so we have some time. So, so yeah, that's definitely. I knew, I knew about like once a year. I knew how many watch. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, and and one of the things I really love it is the music too, because because I've watched in my in my country, Kino, he's great. Yeah, Michael G. Aquino. So yeah. so like I watch interviews with him. And like he has a theme song for every individual character when their character, whenever they come on on screen, kind of like Star Wars, when you see a certain character come on screen, uh, on screen, they start playing their theme song or, or whatever. And like the music just just perfect. There's been so many times where, where like I'm just fighting back tears, like even Jin and Sun, like like their relationship together, just like just oh. like so many different moments. And and like I don't think I've ever gotten so emotional over a TV show in my entire life there's so many characters i just love to hate like like the benjamin linus and and like some of those guys that are so ruthless and evil i just want to see them just like taken down but then they're just characters that you that you love and i've had times where i'm about to cry and i've had times where i want to stand up and cheer you know it's just all that show is just everything my yeah my feeling is not me yeah so matt we're here number two uh, it is a show that the series finale, and I have to say it's probably the most controversial season's finale the last 25 years. Um, it's How I Met Your Mother. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. I love, love, love that show. I will say this. I love the eighth season. 
the fact that he ended up with Robin never bothered me because that was obvious. Oh, that start. bothered me a lot. Yeah, but... me, me, the, me. What bothered me was how they treated the mother in the last episode. They literally just did her death in one scene. That is the only complaint I have about that finale. That is true. That rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. because she is she over the course of that season became my favorite character. My favorite episode is the one that focused on her. How your mother met me. Oh, okay. yeah. And the moment where at the very end she pulls out the ukulele that her late boyfriend bought her and she plays yeah. the famous French song La Vie en Rose. Yeah. And they pan yeah. over, which I ha- I bought it, I listen to it all the time, I cry all the time listening to that song. And then they pan yeah, over to Ken just, where he's just sitting there yeah. and you hear the voiceover. And that was the first time I ever heard your mother sing. Like I'm I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about right. it. Me too. The emotional moments uh-huh. of that show when Marshall found out his dad died, that wasn't scripted. Oh. He he what he was to understand what was originally in the script was Marshall I'm pregnant. But they pulled oh. Allison Hannigan aside and they said, No, this is the real line, like they did with Luke's what they did with Mark Hamill. And so his reaction was his real reaction. Oh. That's wow. another one. That's, cool. that's another episode that just tears me up that the, those subsequent three episodes and him you know hearing his father's last message to him and there's just so many good moments with this hell i own the ducky tie <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh the ducky tie nice <laughs> yeah. well, there's just so many good moments from that episode barney stinson like he's a guy yeah he's a douche but everybody needs that kind of guy in your life you know deep down he's always has your back um that's yeah, amazing I, acting from from Neil Patrick Harris, because because in real life he's a homosexual, but like he plays the best heterosexual oh, yeah. character I've ever seen on TV. <laughs> oh, for sure. Challenge. I I will use challenge accepted whenever I can. Uh, I work with a guy named Ted, and I will call him Ted Evelyn Moss every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, that you, is the show I've prob I've binge probably you every Ted? year and a half. <laughs> Every year and a half, I binge. Nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, I, I love it. There's and you know what? Uh, the songs that come out of that show are really, really good. They, there's a cover of um, Tom West's um, "Downtown Train" that is that you heard on the show that is phenomenal. The soundtrack is great. The series is great. Yeah, I can't say anything bad about it except for that one scene with how they 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 treated the mother's death. That's the only complaint I have. Uh, I get that. Yep, yeah. yeah. yeah, I love it. How there's so many inside jokes too for that show. Like if you watch, there's like just like inside joke after inside oh, yeah. joke, you know. <laughs> oh, and you can't go wrong with the slap bed. Right, <laughs> slap bed <laughs> yeah. is a classic. Yeah, especially the 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 one where uh, they did the slap bed song and you hear Barney on the ground like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there's even. I, I love that show. There's even been a couple of times where where I'm going out out like. I uh, go out to do a little bit of shopping when I have just like a free day, and I'm like, I got to put on Robin's. Let's go to the mall just for fun. It's just yeah. cheesy, but but it's a classic, you know. It, it, <laughs> it is, and I personally hope we never find out what happened with the pineapple. Right? <laughs> yeah, you never find <laughs> out. What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, or the episode that just starts out with the goat. You're wondering like, where this goat came Did from. Did they reveal like, what the, the heck? pineapple? They reveal it. Really? Uh, they reveal- I, I I won't say what what it is. I can't remember, but it, it has been revealed. Okay, I must not remember that because I yeah, to me it's still a mystery. It was I after think... the fact. And for oh, me too. Okay. It, it was like on the um, collector set or something. Ah, uh, okay. But yeah, I, I think but I so I have a question back. for you for you guys about about how much your your mother so the. So the actor that that plays Ted Mosby, like he's such yeah. a great actor, but like has he been in anything else? I've tried to find he him does, in anything else. And I don't see, think here's he the thing about him. Uh he's mostly does independent films and stage. That's mostly what okay. he does. Yeah. He's such Josh, a great uh, actor. I want Josh to Rainer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I want to see him in like everything. Like he's a great actor. <laughs> have you yeah. Have you guys seen none another team movie? Oh, of course. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah. I was just saying, he's in he, there too. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's in that movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's the uh, the college campus guy. guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I think my favorite oh, episode really. has to be when they get the like same tape stuck in into the car. So he keeps playing. I would walk five hundred yeah. miles over and over and over again. Yeah. 
Yeah, that yeah, that just uh, just cracks me up every time. Yeah, there's there. Yeah, my, I, I think I might have watched it. My mm-hmm. favorite episode is Thanksgiving. Oh, uh, which one? The Thanksgiving? No, Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With, yeah. With, with the Blitz. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, um, what is yeah. Wow. yeah. Classic. <laughs> I I can relate to Ted in this in the sense that I too am searching for the one. I'm no. I'm gonna say this. I'm not a cad like Ted at all. But I can under I I can empathize with the character that way. Where I'm just trying to find my soulmate. So I think that's probably why I connected that show so much. And I secretly want to have a Barney Stinson in my life. <laughs> yeah, we all need we all need a good wingman like like Barney Stinson. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Okay, so yep. Ben, you we've uh, we've revealed your number one already, right? Breaking yeah. down. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Is there want... anything anything else you want to say about it? Um, I mean, not yeah. I mean, I said everything I wanted to say. Okay. And what was your number awesome. one again there, Jordan? So my number one is actually from my, my childhood because it has so much nostalgia. Number one is actually Boy Meets World. Oh, yeah. I own the whole series <laughs> on DVD. Oh, Fee! nice. Yeah. Oh, my God. Fee-dee. Yep. Fee-dee. Yeah, so actually – Yeah, so actually uh, uh, one of my favorite people that, I, that I've ever gotten to meet at any Comic-Con – is I actually got to meet Will Friedle at a comic con, and I got a picture with oh, him. Man. Me and my wife got a we got a picture with him. We asked him if he would say the Feeny, but but I think maybe he gets asked that like yeah, constantly. Yeah, he, he so, said he's retired. That he doesn't do that anymore. Yeah, so he said if you come over and get an autograph, then I'll write it out for you in an autograph. So we're like, all right, that's fair enough. But like he he was just like couldn't have been more friendly and and just down to earth. He was actually supposed to do a big panel there, but they but they said and and. Uh, and like I believe him, I think, but like he, they said that he, that he has pretty bad social anxiety. So like it's yeah. like doing those those panels are a little tough for him, which is kind of like the opposite of his character. Like he's the most outgoing, over the top character, yeah. you know. But that's why you didn't see him do anything but on screen between Boy Meets World and Girl Meets World. He revealed that he uh, that's why he prefers voice acting. Is somewhere along the line, his social anxiety just kicked in, and he could he couldn't get out of the house. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's. Yeah. It's gotta be tough, but but yeah, like for me, like I don't think that there's a better friendship in the, in like in like all of TV than than uh, uh, Sean and Corey from Boy Meets World. That's yeah, just it's like the definitely one of the best friendship. Like, oh, it's just it's just so good. And then like one of the best love stories, really, with with Corey yep. and Topanga too. Like, it's just. Did oh. you uh, watch Girl Meets World? Yes. So I watched Girl Meets World, but. But I think I probably haven't seen like like probably about about half of the final season, which I was like really bummed that they canceled it. Like I thought that the yeah. season like they could have done a lot more. But it's like I think people were just watching it for all the Boy Meets World cameos. I don't think anyone yeah, was no, cared no, about anything else happening. <laughs> that's what I did. I've only seen the episodes where they brought in like Sean and Eric and the you know that's all, and the one where they had um shit. What's his name? Jack. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are your yeah, thoughts on Boy Meets kid- World? There, Ben. Yeah. It, it's not in my top five. Or it might be in my top ten. I really liked it. Yeah. And it's my childhood. I like you. I mean, yeah, it's funny. So funny I put I put that show probably in my top twenty, uh, like because yeah. I'm the same age as you guys. Um. The thing is, I did watch it as a kid. I just, it, I don't know what it was. It, I didn't get into it until I was in my 20s and I bought everything on DVD. And that's when I fell in love with it. Like, I liked it as a yeah. kid. But that's when I fell in love with it. Hands down, yeah. my favorite, favorite moment, favorites, yeah, favorite moment in that series is Plays with Squirrels. Yes. Oh that's exactly what I was going to say. Plays with Squirrels. That's my yeah. favorite, too. I, I married it. a moose. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yep, and then he comes back in Girl Meets World as plays with as, squirrels. Yeah, and then he reveals. His, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that is hands down my favorite moment from that show. Yeah, but yeah, that. Yeah, and if you're a real diehard Boy Meets World fan, like if you watch Girl Meets World, there's so many little subtle hints too. Oh, they yeah. even make yeah. a little subtle hint to like there's an episode where the, where they go up to the ski lodge and and 
and like Corey has the kiss with the other girl at the ski lodge. And I yeah. guess that they have that, that girl's son on an episode. And yeah. so, they, oh. so, so when he walks out, he says, by the way, my mom says hi. And that's like the last thing that you hear on the episode. And you're like, Oh my gosh, that's a callback to that episode. Oh, man. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I liked about that show. Cause you brought back characters like Harvey Kleiner, who Harvey Kiner, who was the janitor. Um, you had yeah. Nick the son. Um, and Lucas, what, what yeah. I liked was uh, at the uh, graduation episode in Boy Meets World, they reference what happened to Minkus after the first season. Yep, yep, yep. It's like, oh, it's just at the oh. end of the school. Hey, guys yeah, are like, hey Mr. Turner. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were very good at that. Yeah. Yeah, one of the really cool things they got to do recently, actually, is that so they, they had this. Um, they had an online thing where where um, you could do a Zoom call with all the cast of, of oh really uh, of Boy Meets World, so that the whole entire cast, and then they watched an episode and they gave commentary on the episode. So they picked my, my all time favorite episode was the Halloween episode where they're where they're all in the high school and you keep hearing "Welcome to John Adams High, where yeah, you with, are gonna die." Is that the one with Jennifer Love? Uh, uh, yep. Hewitt? Yeah. 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 Jennifer Love Hewitt, and then and then went. When Eric Caesar just runs up to her and just starts making out hardcore with her, just going at her, and just like, whoa. Yeah. They were dating at that time in real life. Oh, they were? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, that yeah. That yeah, so, yeah. Yes, that makes sense. And then the big reveal at, at the end when there's two Sean's and it's a story just about Sean, I guess, being inside his own head or the, I don't know, being yeah. too too worried about things or I, I don't know, but... It, but the, yeah, that's that's by far my favorite episode. Like, oh, Yeah, so I... Like obviously, um, Will Friedle is my favorite character on the show, um, but there's just something about um, about uh, Sean that you can connect yeah. with. Like the the episodes where he sees, you know, after his dad dies and he goes on the road and he sees his dad. Like the emotional stuff they did with Sean was amazing. Uh, I yeah, I I think it's probably some one of the best written characters in TV. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Definitely. So, all right. All right. Okay. So I guess. I guess Matt, you're number one. <laughs> um, my number one is the fictional mockumentary about the townsfolk of Pawnee, Indiana, Parks Ooh. and Recreation. Ooh. Yes, I love me some Parks and Rec. I yeah, uh, that is I another show that I didn't watch when it was on air. I actually came to it late. I came to it two years ago because another one of my friends is obsessed with it. Um, and that is the only series I've watched, watched through and then watched through again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I probably watched it through twice. I've watched it through five times in two years. Oh, geez. <laughs> I yeah. got to watch it. I never watched it before. All the way through. Yeah. It, it's like the office where the first season is rough, but if you can get past those first six episodes, sky's the limit. It is so, so funny. Um, the obsession with little Sebastian, the horse, Ron Swanson. Like, I mean, you can't go yep. wrong. I, in my office, Ron at work Swanson. in my receiving office. I have the Swanson pyramid of power, pyramid of greatness. Oh, sorry. that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And everybody stops and looks at it and laughs. Um, yeah. Him, the, the, him and Tammy's relationship, like all the, the Tammy's. That, yeah. Uh, that is a, like really intense. <laughs> yeah. And why did you shave off the middle of your mustache? I didn't shave it. It's friction. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it is so well written, and it's like how you know uh, Chris Pratt became a big star, and the relationship between Leslie and Ben is up there with one of the best relationships in TV for me. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I like it. I honestly can't say anything bad about the series. It is ingrained in my soul at this point. Um, I when my my friend who introduced me to the show, um. Got, got her a new job and in a new office. I took a cue from something Leslie Nope does, who has the pictures of all of her role models in the office. And my oh, friend's go. role model is Leslie Nope. So I got her a famed picture of Leslie Nope put on her wall. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that, that show is, like I said, it's ingrained in my soul. You know, treat yourself. Yeah. Yeah, right. Treat yes, yourself. <laughs> ben, you should watch it and treat yourself. <laughs> you, I will. You do. Yeah. You definitely got to. Yeah. Uh, so did you watch the reunion episode they had recently? I did. Yeah, my my friend came over and we we watched it. Um, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. How Ron deal? How they all deal with COVID? I love how uh, Chris Pratt, uh, Andy Dwyer was locked in the basement, and uh, you had the cameo from Tammy too. 
with Ron, which was funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah, Ben, I don't know if you know, Tammy too is uh, played by his wife Megan Mullally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. good. Yeah, so actually, my my neighbor is a couple. Well, so it's in the same building, but it's a different stairwell in our apartment complex. Um, I'm on their their balcony. They have a Ron Swanson cardboard cutout peeking out the window, so we get a. We nice. drive past Ron Swanson every time we come home. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so my uh, my dating profile, the quote of my dating profile is "Don't half ass two things, whole ass one thing." <laughs> yeah, I think that like like Ron Swanson, like like I don't really want to say he he's a role model of mine, but like uh, but like he's just like like probably the manliest man you could ever like let, oh for like, sure in, in your life. So like, it's so, like I don't know if you've ever gone onto YouTube. But, and like watch all the videos from from uh from him that it that he's put out. So he has some from like Man Made where he's like talking about all the different things yeah, that yeah. he does to his mustache, where he bathes it in like whale oil and special, and he like massages yeah. it and all, and all the different things that he talks about. It's so good, just so now, funny. This is harkening back to our patron singer. Did you know he was a friend of John Schnepps? Really, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, apparently they worked together when Ron, when um, Nick Offerman first Nick Offer arrived in Hollywood. They worked on a show together, and they became friends. And uh, you can actually watch um, the Celebration of Life for Schnepp on, I think it's YouTube. And he actually went up and spoke. Yeah, they were they were friends. Oh wow! Um, yeah, yeah. I think all the best quotes from that show, though, they definitely like definitely come from Ron Swanson. Like when he's like, "Give me all the bacon and eggs that you." Yeah. You have like no no no, no. like <laughs> like yeah like a misunderstand when I say all the bacon and eggs I mean all yeah. the bacon and eggs that you have yeah you or know? <laughs> you know sleep fighting oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> or uh or or um when they get drunk on uh what the heck was it um venom no oh, snake juice oh yeah snake juice yeah because he just drinks it because yeah. it's a dark alcohol or something yeah. <laughs> Um, like dark alcohol. <laughs> if I were to recommend something, uh, the Paley panel they all did for the ten year reunion, I would recommend watching that. That was actually pretty fun. You learned a lot about stuff, a lot about the show on that. Um, oh, nice. From the same same one of the crew, one of the writers of The Office, because originally Parks and Rec was supposed to be a spin off of The Office. That's how it was originally conceptualized, but that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah and it's such that, a great show. I think that the minute that that show really got. Like when it went from like like a good show to like an amazing show for me is when they when they added Rob Lowe and and Adam Scott yes. to the cast. Yes, like, when they like, brought like when they just, them in. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah I'm like, with you there. Once they joined the show, that was it. That was it. Was it was a classic. Yeah, like I, like still to this day, one of my favorite episodes is when when he makes the cones of Dunshire game and he's trying to explain it to like Leslie what it all is and stuff. It's the cones of Dunshire. Yeah. And it's just some, some crazy rules and things that are just over the top. Cause he, he's obsessed with that weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's some, here's some trivia for you, Jordan. Yeah. Do you, do you remember Adam Scott with that boy meets Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, that's right. He played the bully that took over for Harley. Oh, oh yeah, rip, yeah, rip that's what it out. was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Adam Scott, yeah, he was on there. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, one of my one of my favorite things that involves Adam Scott from uh, Parks and Rec was the episode. Um, I think it was the end of season three, where uh, they're doing the celebration of life for little Sebastian, and they get uh, Leslie and Ben get caught making out by the uh, by one of the workers there. So they sell you know you could go home, they pay whatever, and it turns out he was the one that was supposed to fill up the torch with the gasoline, so they got Jerry to do it, and he put way too much. So Ron Swanson goes out <laughs> to light it, and he lights a giant fireball blows up in his face in front of everybody. And then they show him at the after awesome. party, he's like, got his singed hair here, no eyebrows, his mustache is gone. Oh, it was so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's so good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my homework is, I gotta watch Breaking Bad, and Lost Ben, you have to watch Parks and Rec. I will. Yeah. I will. You haven't even inspired me to go back and watch more Smallville. I think I've only seen like like the first season, so definitely want to check. I've, I've got that was Smallville. the first complete series box set I bought. So, hey, oh, nice. boy. Yeah, well, but I still have it somewhere. Yeah, but see, it's in my spare bedroom. It's it's a beast. <laughs> I have the complete, <laughs> I have the complete series sets for that, like the special edition sets for that Batman the animated series, and I got the limited edition Batman sixty six one on Blu ray with the Batmobile. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. So that's to get theme there. Superheroes. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, uh, that brings us, brings us to the end of the show. Um, so I'm going to reveal the topic for next week's. Oh, did you want to say something there, Ben, first? No. Go ahead. Okay. I was going to say uh, it's my turn to pick the topic for next week, so I'm going to reveal what it is. Top five albums of all time. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. I like it. I like it. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm a I'm a big music fan. Um, Kiss is my favorite all time band. I've been to numbers of concerts. Uh, I'm a mus- some. I, I like to think I'm a musician myself. Um, so I figured that would be an interesting one because nowadays everyone listens to MP3s and parts of songs. So it'd be interesting to see if we can come come up with a top five albums of all time. Nice. That's cool. Me and my wife went and saw Kiss for the first time a couple of years back, and it was a, one of the best shows. I've oh, yeah. Seen. I saw them <laughs> twice, floor seats both times. Oh, nice. Yeah, they yeah. definitely like just go all out with the pyrotechnics and the um, flying above the crowd. The all mon- the... Did you see them on the monster tour with the giant spider? No, we didn't see that. That would have been okay, awesome. That was <laughs> that was my second show. It was delayed by an hour because the spider wasn't working. Oh, dang. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen Aerosmith. I've seen Bon Jovi. I've seen Def Leppard. I've seen Joan, Joan Jett. I saw Guns N' Roses. I saw Duff McKagan's Loaded. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of bands. Dang, yeah. I've seen a lot of bands too, but they're mostly like like more kind of like, like – I've been to a lot of punk rock shows. So like I, oh, yeah. I used to be huge into punk rock and stuff. So so that's what I kind of – when I grew up in high school. Nowadays, I kind of like more like pop and rock and stuff. But But like I'm definitely like punk rock is my roots. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, rock like uh, like eighties nineties rock and uh, and seventies rock and eighties nineties country music. Oh, nice! <laughs> so you right probably on. will see a country music album on there. Yeah, I'm not huge huge in the country, but I but I, but I do appreciate the greats like a Garth Brooks or a Tim yeah. McGraw. You know, some of the big ones. I'm so. of the mindset that the modern country music is more leans more towards Leonard Skinner than it does country. It is true. Yeah, I would actually yeah. probably agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so folks, that is the end of the show. Ben, where can everybody find you? Uh, at my Twitter, at Ben Twitter two, and if you guys notice, uh, we have an email address. And yeah, you can find us there. Yeah, I want to apologize for that. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm dyslexic or something like that, but every once in a while I'll mix letters. And I think I had the show down on the mind when I created that email address. That's why it's MTS gets sweaty instead of MSN gets sweaty. But it is what it is. So yeah. it is what it, it is. Right, it works. Yeah. <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah. All right. And Jordan, where can everybody find you? Um, so you can find me uh, mostly on, on Facebook in the get sweaty group, but, and it, if you search for Jordan Anderson 21 is, is where you find me on Facebook, but you can also find me. I'll, I'll say it slowly because there's numbers involved. It's my, my previous zip code where I lived in, in Idaho, but it's, uh, you can find me on, on Twitter and Instagram at Jordan Anderson, eight, three, six, one, six. That's it. And you can find me at soda underscore the underscore sax on Twitter and Instagram. Um, you can find me over with my buddies, Daniel, Lewis, Louie, and David over on uh, the Schmoes on the North channel. Uh, we are currently dropping like three episodes a week because of all the Schmodown matches that we're having right now. Um, right. This past week, I sat down with the former IG champion himself and star of the show, Boy Meets World, Kevin Smets. Or not Boy Meets <laughs> yeah. World. Uh, Bobby's World. Sorry. Bobby's, Bobby's World, Kevin Smets. He played the he voiced the brother. He voiced the brother oh, really? of Bobby. Boy, Bobby's I didn't yeah. know that. No way. Like, yeah. I, I totally grew yeah. up on that show. Yeah. That's, that's um, awesome. So, yeah, I got to sit yeah. down with him for half an hour. It was great. We just shot the shit, talked about whatever. Um, that should be dropping at some point this week. Um, there might be a little something coming down the line between all of the Schmodown reactors. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, it sounds like it's going to be pretty cool. So, hopefully, when that's when that we get the okay, I'm looking forward to announcing that. And uh, nice. yeah, I'm you can also it. find me over on the Media Sweaties Twitter uh, network, uh, Twitter page. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. So, with that note, uh, everybody, enjoy your weekend, your upcoming week, you guys too, and uh, stay sweaty. Stay sweaty. Stay sweaty.